What's up guys? Welcome back to AWS Simplified. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some basic DynamoDB operations, including get item and queries. So in an effort to speed things up, I've already prepared a DynamoDB table with some data in it. So let's take a closer look at this table and go over the questions that I'm trying to answer with my queries. So in this table, we have a composite partition key. So that's transaction type underscore origin country. We have a date that corresponds to our sort key or range key. Then we also have some descriptive attributes, the amount and the customer ID. So some of you may be wondering, why do I have this composite partition key? Well, it boils down to the question that we are going to try and answer with these queries. So in this example, my question that I wanna answer is, what are the transactions for each specific country within a certain date? Specifically, we're gonna be looking at purchase transactions. So say for instance, we see here that we have four records, all of them purchase underscore USA, and they all occurred on a different date. We also have some others, so purchase underscore India, purchase underscore Canada, but the queries I'm gonna be looking at are gonna be specific to USA. So, so again, the question I'm trying to answer is, for a specific country, give me all the purchase transactions that occurred after a specific date. So say for instance, I want to know all the purchases in USA that occurred after or before the 17th of November. So that's the query that we're gonna be performing in one of the later steps. Uh, the get item that I'm gonna be showing as well is if you know a specific transaction type and a specific country and a specific date, so you know you are looking for exactly this record here, then I'm gonna be showing you how to do a get item to retrieve that specific record. Okay, so this is the table that we're gonna be working with. If this didn't make sense, especially the format of how I am structuring this database, be sure to check out my other video on DynamoDB schema design where I go over this topic in detail and why it's important to prevent some hot partitioning on your DynamoDB table. So let's move on now and actually do it. So the first thing I need to do is go create a IAM role that has permissions in order to access this table. So I went to IAM, I'm going to roles, I'm going to click on create role. And we're gonna be doing this from a Lambda function. If you're doing this from a local machine, then you just need to create a policy and associate that with your user. But since we're doing it with a Lambda, we need to create a role and associate the policy with the role. So let's do that. Let that load. So the first thing we need is just a Lambda basic execution role. This is required for all Lambda functions, or excuse me, policy. Uh, the second thing is we need some basic DynamoDB access. So I'm gonna be using one of the predefined policies. Not gonna be using full access. Um, it's kind of dangerous, especially in production. Gonna be using the read-only access here. If we expand this out a little bit to see what's inside. You can see it has a bunch of stuff. The one that we are actually interested in is get item, DynamoDB get item, and DynamoDB query. I'd encourage you if you're doing this in production, also limit this policy to a specific table that you're gonna be interacting with. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna be doing that in this example. Moving on. Going to review, so Dynamo DB Lambda role. Leaving everything else blank. Here's the summary of the policies that we're going to be applying. Clicking on create role. All right, now we have our role. Let's go to Lambda now. Okay, click that. I'm gonna go over to create function. We're gonna be doing this from scratch. Transaction query example. Gonna be doing this in Python 3.7, there we go. Now we need to select the role that we just created so that this Lambda has the correct permissions. So we're gonna select create an existing role. And then in this drop down here, let's select the DynamoDB Lambda role that I just created. Okay, create function now. All right, so the function was created successfully. And let's just copy all this stuff out and move it over to Sublime. Okay, perfect. So let's just get rid of this stuff here. All right. Okay, so let's actually uh, set this thing up. So the first thing we need to do is just import some dependencies. So we're going to be using the Boto3 library here. Also need a other Boto3 dependency, um, a DynamoDB conditions dependency. Import key. So it's going to be useful in our query step, which we'll see in a minute here. Uh, so we also need to define our DynamoDB client where we're going to be interacting with the table. So we're going to say client equals portal3.resource DynamoDB. 
And after that, we need to get a pointer to the specific table that we're going to be interacting with. Mine was called transactions. Obviously, yours is going to be something different. So let's say table equals client dot table. And it's called transactions. Okay, cool. So in the first example, uh, we're going to be doing just a very basic lookup. We're going to be doing a lookup based on ID. So we want to look for the transaction type and or origin country combination of purchase and USA. And we want to look for the one on the date of November 17th. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So get item by ID. So let's say response is equal to table dot get underscore item. And then we need to specify a key parameter and the key is equal to this. And from here, we need to say our partition key. So transaction type underscore origin country. And the value that we are looking for is purchase underscore USA. And I also said we want to look for November 17th. So let's say date, which is the sort key name and 2019-11-17. Okay, perfect. So let's just, after that, we'll print out the response. And in the get item API, the response object will contain a item key and the item key will reflect the row that we are getting back from Dynamo. Okay, so that, that's all it takes in order to get a item by its specific partition key and sort key combination. Okay, so let's just print a delimiter here so we can actually distinguish between the previous example and the one that's coming up. Okay, so in the second example, we're gonna be doing something slightly different. So we're gonna say, I want all the records that are purchase underscore USA that occurred after November 15th. So if you recall the table that we had before, we had four rows in total. One of them was from October. So in the result set that we're going to expect to get back, we're only going to have three rows and those rows should all have a date that is greater than November 15th. So let's do that. So we're going to say the second one is example two, and we're going to be query by partition key, key and sort key criteria. Now let's say response is equal to table dot query this time. Recall here up here, we're using the table dot get item. Now we're using query and we need to specify something slightly different. So it's called a key condition expression. So key condition expression is equal to key. And the notation here is much more straightforward than the notation that I'm using up here. This is just a reflection of the Bodo library. It's much more intuitive as you'll see in a second. So we'll say transaction type underscore origin country. Let's make this a little bit bigger for everyone. Equals dot EQ purchase underscore USA. And the key of date is greater than or GT 2019-11-15. So just to go over this really quick, we're saying that we're gonna perform a query and the expression, the key condition expression that we're gonna apply is the origin country transaction type combination must be purchase underscore USA and the date must be greater than November 15th of this year. Okay, so in terms of printing out the response to see what we get, the response is slightly different. When you're performing a query, you can retrieve one or more items. So we have a items key here, as opposed to in the get item, you only have one item. So now we have a list. So let's iterate over the list. So for item in items, just print the item. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I'm gonna be making this code available in the comments section below. Uh, so don't worry about memorizing this or trying to uh, copy it out. So let's take this here. Let's move it back into our Lambda. Click on save. Oh, unfortunately, we need a test event. Let's just create one really quick. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we put in. We're not reading off the input, so you can leave everything here as default. And so let's test this thing out now. Clicked on test. Okay, so it was successful. Let's go down here and see what we did. 
So we can see in the first example, we were doing the get item and we were looking for purchase underscore USA and November 17th. And that's exactly what we got back. So that's perfect. And in the second example, we were doing a query using a partition key and a sort key criteria. So you can see that in my query, I originally said I only want the transactions after the 15th of November, and I am getting only the transactions after the 15th with purchase underscore USA. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Dynamo, I'm going to be putting a link to one of my Dynamo playlists on the right hand side of the screen. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.